Chatin on Sunday. Welcome to the Race by Race preview, including, of course, Paul Lally's selections, and we get things underway at 1 o'clock. Eight on the turf with the rail in the A-course position in two on the all-weather. The first is the longest race of the day. It's an 1,800-metre Class 5. Joyful Prosperity has blinkers back on. Fury and Gold has blinkers for the first time. Down to Sunny Baby, who's a two-time winner at the distance. Kingly Demeanor wears a hood. We've got Splendid Star having his second run back for the campaign. And Leather Master's been back for the trial since disappointing. On opening day, the speed here, Paul, from Golden Fairy. Yeah, Golden Fairy likes to go forward. It doesn't look to me too much pace in the race with Kingly Demeanor drawing low. Fruity Warrior won't be far away. Colourful Baron should get his opportunity. Splendid Star gets back. Sunny Baby's the query because he's drawn 11, but I think he'll probably have to slot back. Our first replay features a Fruity Warrior beating all but uh, Arthur's Kingdom, who just keeps on winning. Trailed him everywhere, Paul couldn't quite get past. Distance, same as what he races on Sunday, only changes the track. Yeah, so look, I think Fruity Warrior is, uh, is capable. He's, he's run third in Class 4 in the past, so in this Class 5 grade, he, he should be able to win a race. Uh, drawn seven, Brendan of Duller aboard, fought on strongly enough. Arthur's Kingdom, to be fair to the horses, has been going really well, super recently, so he was well clear of anything else. So I think he's one of the main chances. Fruity Warrior is a good report for Paul out of that replay. What about Colourful Baron? This is his go-to. Not this replay where he did a good job running third on the all-weather, the 1800 metre turf course at Shard 10. Two starts, one win, one second. Yeah, and look, he did win off a similar rating too. He won off 30. He's off this 31 rating. He's really drawn nicely in barrier number four. Look, he, he, I think he just sort of um, came to the end of his run here. Uh, he's had this run under his belt. Coming up to 1800 looks ideal onto the turf. So I think he's the one to beat. I, I quite like him in this race. There you go. That's as far as we'll need to go. But uh, we've got one more replay to show as uh, Colourful Baron. Gets off the all-weather on to the turf for the first race on Sunday. And this last replay, Paul, is a trial by Fury and Gold, who's had the eight starts, done nothing, goes from the 1600 to the 1800. The trial was a whole lot better. Was it enough to grab your attention, though? No. No, no, he doesn't go in for me. I like to see him do it on the racetrack. Six starts. Like, he's run seventh, a couple of eights. Maybe it was the blinkers here. But it's really hard to tell, because this is a 1,200-metre dirt trial, and now he's going to do an 1,800 metres on the all-weather. And he was pushed out a little bit towards the end, so I'm happy just to watch him. Wait and see when it comes to Fury and Goal, but it's not wait and see when it comes to Colourful Baron. Yeah, I think Colourful Baron uh, can, can win this contest, so he goes on top for me, the seven, uh, to beat the four Fruity Warrior. And then the two Joyfuls, Prosperity and Champion, and for third and fourth. Joyful Prosperity was a costly uh, beaten favourite last time, uh, but blinkers back on him, we'll put him in there for on a third line. Seven, four, one, ten. Paul with the South Africans to win the first. Lyle Hewitson to ride the opening winner for Douglas White. Well, race number two is the Lama Island Handicap and it's over the distance of 1,400 metres and we've got Yoda's Choice on the class drop. Young Horizon, this is his go, loves the conditions that he gets in this race. Island Golden Ren third, first up. We've got Super Charizard dropping into class five. Excellent Daddy has the cheek pieces going back on. Telecom Bullet on the class drop. Blinkers and tongue tie off. Shadow Roll on and Lady Billy. She's minus at the pacifiers in race number two with the pace coming from Island Golden Pool. Yeah, I think he can get across and uh, lead Young Horizon, who, look, he, he likes to go forward as well, so he won't be too far away. Super Elite should be able to get across. Uh, Gallant Goody, Yoda's Choice, has been downgraded. Excellent Daddy, back to the other, other four who generally get back. Super Charizard's been slow away in most of his starts. Our first replay, is it a case of when it comes to this horse, you throw in a little bit of 1,400 metres, a little bit of class five, and you get a result of Young Horizon winning? Yeah, that's how I've done it. Um, look, he's won twice here in this grade of 36, 38, slightly higher at 40 um, in this one, but not too much uh, in the right grade. Uh, and this, this seems to be the, the winning uh, formula for Young Horizon. Get him down into Class 5, and he, he seems to run well. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be tough to beat, especially with uh, Zach Burton aboard as well. Three rides on the horse for a win and a couple of placings for Zach. Island Golden Ren, third. He's uh, had the 18 starts for just the one win. Kiwi bred with Derek Long and Manfred Mann. Just tracking the speed here, but fitter for the first up third. Yeah, look, and he did win off 52 running, so he's, he is capable. Just that one win, and that was his uh, debutant run, actually. 
um, off the 52 rating. He's dropped down into class five. Look, he's capable in this grade, I think. Uh, he, he should go forward. Um, and I think he'll put himself right on the pace. So uh, he goes in for me, Island Gold. That is uh, the three horse there with Charmander winning that race. That's our second replay. We've got one more to have a look at here. It's be Gallant Goody. Now, this is a fifth from him, and it was a first up fifth at Happy Valley behind Sky Song. He did place at the back end of last time in, so there has been some improvement there, but enough to go into your numbers. Yeah, he does, actually, because I think he'll be in the right position. He should be in the first four around the turn, and uh, the way he finishes off this race, you think the step from 12 to 14 at uh, Shartin should be perfect for him. So, yeah, he'll go in as well. He's in on a minor line because uh, they're all chasing Young Horizon, according to you. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, look, the first four on the speed map coming around the bend are my first four numbers. I think they'll be the first four home. Young Horizon, Island Golden, Gallon Goody, and I think Super Elite with Hugh Bowman can get outside the leader. But I do like the two. Two, three, nine, four. Paul with Young Horizon to continue on his good record in Class 5 over the 1,400 metres. Well, weather racing for the first of two occasions is race number three and the distance of it is 16.50. It's a class four. Floof's a last start winner. He carries an extra three pounds for it. USS Constitution blinkers off. Hood and pacifiers go on. Dragon Star just the second time on the all weather for him. His first was over 1,200 metres. XL Wong Choi minus the pacifiers. Forever folks placed last start. Lucky Benner gets in really well here. And Palace Pal makes his all weather debut. Lucky Benner. Wait up the speed to cross. We've seen plenty of pace, Paul, from Harker Radiance. He has. Look, in, uh, stepping up to the 1650 with Harker Radiance seems to be the key. He can sort of uh, hold the lead. Lucky Banner likes to go forward as well. So I think they'll share it. Dragon Star, like he's been sitting off the pace in his last couple of starts. XL Wong Choi can get a perfect trail. Uh, USS Constitution went forward and led at his last start, but dropped out. And Floof it's, might find it a little bit trickier from a wider draw. Here is the win by Floof last time, but he's not the only horse to come out of this race. Forever Folks runs on, and Lucky Benner, he's not going to get too many better opportunities than this race, is he, Paul? Big drop in the weights from this, and race is well second up. Yeah, exactly. Look, the big uh, thing with this track was it was wet slow, so it was hard for this, these horses like Forever Folks. You could see him making really good ground late down the outside. Uh, his, his wins have been on a dry uh, all-weather track, which he should get on Sunday. There's not too much rain forecast, so if that's the case, I can see him finishing off quite strongly, and he's won off a higher rating before. That is forever, folks, who's just missed running second there from well off the pace. Dragon Star, we are more often than not used to seeing him at Happy Valley on a Wednesday night, and he's been pretty consistent around the smaller circuit. Wins off rating of 47 and 42. He's higher at 53. 16.50, no problem. What about the surface? Yeah, well, he's had one go on it. He didn't feature, but um, the, the breeding's there, and he does generally work well enough on it. Uh, the horse is very fit, as you can see, and he stayed on really nicely here. I didn't want to completely leave him out. I've just put him in on a minor line. One more to check out. That is USS Constitution, who's been back to the trial since finishing down the track on the turf last time. Hugh Bowman takes the ride for John Size and uh, just sort of holds his spot in this trial. Yeah, look, I made him the long shot last start and he was a little bit disappointing. Coming, different surface for him now. I, I, look, I didn't get him in in the end. He was right on the cusp, but um, I just thought the trial was OK uh, here. But he will strip a bit fitter and the hood goes on with a senior rider, but... Uh, just, uh, I'm happy to watch him on the surface. Up from the 14 to the 1650s, he switches surface. That is USS Constitution. So he is out this week. What is your top three, four, race three? Top four for race three. Going to go with uh, Forever Folks back onto a dry or weather track, I think, is the, is the key for him. He's one of 48. He's rated 47. Axel Wong Choi raced well um, last time. Lucky Banner, again, he's very consistent. And uh, Dragon Star coming onto the surface. 8695. And that is a preview for race number three, which doubles as the first leg of Sunday's early treble. Straight racing for race number four over the 1,000 metres. And Metro Warrior is very well placed at the top of the book. Ace Victory has the cheek pieces off. First starter is Brilliant Fire. Ka Ying Power has a new home. He's now with Beno Young. 
Better is taken off the blinkers, the hood and the tongue tie. Master Trillium, Dash Avenue, our horses five and six with Dash Avenue having the blinkers off. Invincible Delights on debut, Victory 33 has a tongue tie on. And Gusty Fighters wears cheek pieces for the first time and also has plenty of pace with Happy Horse Paul. Yeah, look, he, he led it all the way to recent trial, Gusty Fighter. So from the outside fence, I expect him to hold it. Happy Horse, we know, likes to go forward as well. He's pretty speedy around Happy Valley. Metro Warrior is always close up. Ace Victory uh, is always uh, quite handy, as is Victory 33. Uh, Dash Avenue has drawn the inside. He'll try and get across and Kaying Power and Almighty Kick haven't shown too much trials and Master Trillion's been slow away in most of his trial, trials, the debutant. First replay, we're going to focus on Metro Warrior here. He runs fourth, a spicy spangle, Almighty Kick also in this race, but down the track. Two runs back, so he's race fit Metro Warrior. Two fourths behind Cheval Valley and Fast Network. Is he ever going to get a better opportunity in a race than this on Sunday? I don't. I, you're right. I think he will. This looks quite an easy race for him. He's one off seventy five. He's a fifty eight rated. He gets a claim as well. So, look, he's just been battling away the last couple, but he's well rated and and it's not a hard race. So he's one of the leading chances for sure. That is uh, the claim for Ellis Wong, who'll take the seven pounds off his last two starts. He's carried one, three, four, and one, three, five. Now we have Dash Avenue running second at the trials. He had one start. He was beaten the long way, pulled up Aurora in that. Uh, Lyle Hewitt's and Dennis Ship, the combination, run second behind Woodfire Champ in this trial. 800 metre trial, again, a roaring condition. Not for me, for this horse, no. All right, so we'll wait till uh, he does something on race day. Dennis has had a pretty good start to the season, though, with uh, numerous wins. But, uh, Paul, just wait and see what Dash Avenue can do as uh, they roll to the finish in that trial. We'll roll across to our next trial, which... Uh, You'll have a bit more input for because this one, Gusty Fighter, you don't mind. Led all of the way on the all weather and just kept on going. Yeah, look, I thought it was a good troll here from Gusty Fighter. Again, he's had limited starts, but he comes in with a light weight. And he's also um, drawn against the, uh, out, well, he's drawn 11 of 12. Cheek pieces on for the first time. Uh, he could easily lead. It doesn't look like a strong race with that light weight. So, again, I think he's, he's a good chance. He's rated 41, so if he doesn't win, uh, then they, it could be a good bet in a lower grade into the Class 5. But a nice um, trial from him. Good reports for the top one and the bottom one so far in the replays for race number four. The big horse, Ace Victory, a winner of one from 12. That was in this grade. Only twice has he raced in Class 4 for that one victory. Yeah, and that was off 60. He's rated 57. Uh, and he, he can be quite a speedy horse over the straight 1,000. Me Choi started off the, uh, the season really well. He could be a bit of a price. So, look, I've got him to beat uh, Metro Warrior, this horse. Um, I think, just think at the prices, he's going to be a, a decent price of sort of a whole lot of duck eggs next to his name, but doesn't tell the true story. And I thought the trial was a nice, easy trial for him as well. That's a good report for Ace Victory. You might, won't miss him. There's plenty of him, yeah, but of course. Metro Warrior gets his chance. Yeah, he does. I'll go him to beat Metro Warrior, though. Two to beat one, uh, near the top of the book for me. Uh, Gusty Fighter. I'm going to put Victory 33 in. I think there's a bit of upside of this horse. He's only had the limited starts. Another one that comes in with a lightish weight, and he shouldn't be too far away with the tongue tie on for the first time. 2-1, 12-9. Uh, it's a good push from Paul for ace victory to win race number four, the first leg of the Triple Trio. Well, race number five comes with a trophy attached. It's the running of the Chinese Recreation Club Challenge Cup over the 1,200 metres. Lucky eights on the class drop. Majestic Express first time to 1,200 metres for him. Fun and fun together is placed two from four course and distance. Gold Masters look good at the trials. Chung Young Stars having uh, his first start. Solar Up steps up to the 1,200 metres. Well, recent racing for Robot Knight has been on the all-weather, just his second look on the turf in race number five. Leader is uh, Robot Knight, also with Fun and Fun Together. Fun and Fun Together has been over racing in most of his runs, and he has got the um, uh, he's got a wide draw once again, and he's got Robot Knight with the Apprentice on the board as well. So they could set it up here. You won't want to get into another speed build though, Fun and Fun Together, because that hasn't worked for him in the past. Uh, Lucky Eight should get a nice enough run. He's well rated, yeah buddy. Uh, Ching Wan Star's gone forward in a few of his trials. Solder up, Gold Master, another one that should get a nice run. 
Majestic Express is our first replay. This is over a thousand last time. Mr. Good Vibes runs 30. He hasn't got a bad record when it comes to course and distance. Majestic Express, Paul, he did race up to 1,100 metres in Australia and struggled at the trip. Never been to the 1,200 anywhere before. Yeah, which is just a little bit of a query. And he was a, he run second. He wasn't expected to run well here because he was 40 to 1. So that, that just worries me a little bit. I, did, I quite like the run of Mr. Good Vibes, though. Uh, he finished off the race quite nicely. So he'll go in, Mr. Good Vibes. That's a ride for Karis Teet. And what are you doing with fun and fun together? You've been... An ardent follower of his, as you said, he got engaged in that speed battle two starts ago. He leads up here. Is he in the mix again? Yeah, he is. But he just, he's his own worst enemy, this horse, because he over races and he, he just wants to race horses in the early stages of the, of the race. And he sort of, you know, he loses his energy towards the end. So, look, I've got him in as the Quinella horse, um, fun and fun together. It's just, again, he's drawn nine with a, a speedster on his inside with an apprentice claim. And it's just... You know, it's possible we could get into another battle. Word of caution around fun and mm. fun together from Paul in race number five. Lucky eight. He's a well-credentialed horse. Two trials, they've both been good. One start, one win this grade. Three starts, first up, first and a second. He's got a bit in his favour. He has. He goes in the numbers. He's one off 70 in the past. He's rated 59. He's only a six-year-old. Seems to have been around a long time, this horse. But um, look, a nice enough trial from him. Uh, it has to carry, uh, it has to carry top weight, but um, in saying that, um, the trial was good, so yeah, he'll go in the numbers for sure. And a winner of two from five, course and distance for a little bit more ammunition around him. Goldmaster comes here, fourth in his first trial behind Super Legends, who's won since, seventh behind Always Fluke, and then he wins this trial when always on the speed and gets away to score well. Has he done enough to grab you on debut? He has actually, because look, on his breeding he shouldn't, because uh, he's by the autumn sun out of a high chaparral mare. So look, I, I just see this horse keep improving start after start. He's had three trolls. Now he's got the blinkers on, see he had the blinkers on this trial, and this is what he did. So he just, uh, to me, he's an improving horse all the way through. He might be able to get away with this because it's not an overly strong race. There you go, there's a push and he's going on top. Yeah, we'll put him on top to beat Fun and Fun together. It's just, the problem with Fun and Fun together is he's just doing two things wrong. If it all clicks for Fun and Fun together, he could easily win. But I'm going to go the other one to beat him. Six to beat five, the well-rated Lucky Eight and Mr. Good Vibes. Six, five, one and ten. And there it is, race number five. First leg of the six up, Paul, with the first starter, number six, Goldmaster. And race number six now, and it looks this way. It's over the 1,400 metres with Harmony Galaxy at the top of the book. Carries an extra eight pounds with Jerry Chow just taking the two off, as opposed to Brittany with the 10 claim last time. Our Invincible back up in trip. Dream Pursuers place first up. Golden Samurai wears some famous colours. A Flying Luck has the tongue tie going on. Mark Wynn wears a tongue tie ahead of his debut. Five trials, three this season. Circuit Fiery also wears a tongue tie. Gallant Crown blinkers off and cheek pieces for the first time. Perfect Peach comes up in grade. Been racing well in class five. Gallant Crown is the pilot here, Paul. Likes to lead. Uh, normally over 1,650 at Happy Valley, but there's no real leader here over the 1,400. Aero Invincible, he over-raced last time, so I mean, if they do let him go, he, he's a possible leader. Mark Wynn has gone forward in both his uh, recent trials. He did win uh, those trials. Circuit Fiery, Golden Samurai should get a nice enough run. Solid win as well, back to Dream Pursuer. Interview time in race number six. It's to Nick now with Andrea Ratzani. Re, solid win. Andrea, solid win is a horse you're going to ride in race number six uh, on the weekend. He's only very lightly raced, but he, he looks to be getting there with every run, doesn't he? Correct, yeah. He only had two runs last season, and uh, his, his comeback run was a very good run. Um, he's still a little bit immature, but um, he hit the line quite nicely. Li still a little bit, little bit green under pressure, and uh, but he's come out of the race really well. I actually sat on him two days ago, and uh, he's well, he's fresh. Physically, he's done well, so yeah, he's ready to go again. Just going back and having a look at that race last time, he made you earn your fee, didn't he? Because he was sort of off the bit quite early and he's, he's, he's found for you all the way to the line. Correct, but I think that comes down to experience, really. Uh, like you said, uh, he's very lightly raced. He's only having his fourth start on, um, on Sunday. So it, that's, that's just down to experience, really. He seems to now, with that run, he's, he's come on quite nicely. I don't think the penny has quite dropped yet, but I think once the penny drops, I think he'll be a nice horse. 
and I guess to some degree, uh, going through his trials form, I mean, it probably wasn't a great surprise because he did trial quite well before his return, didn't he? Correct. So, yeah, even his, his, his two runs last season weren't bad runs at all. He was probably a little bit weak, and uh, he's, like I said, he's definitely got stronger. His trials were good, and uh, it's a very good comeback run, and he's improved from it. I must ask you about gate 10, never ideal. Um, too much of an inconvenience for him, or how do you think that will work out? Well, it was never ideal when he drawn, you know, drawn in 10. He's a horse that ideally needs a little bit of cover, um, you know, and he's a horse that, like you said, watching his last run, he was a little bit green around the bend, so he probably needs a little, little, little bit of help go around the corner and um, up the straight. He seemed pretty straightforward. But, yeah, listen, he'd always like to be drawn a little bit lower, but... Uh, we've drawn 10 we've got to deal with it and uh but like i said he hopefully we can get a nice spot somewhere midfield and he'll be finishing strong he's a star spangled banner andrea so too is, is john beg banner just to ask you about his win at the weekend i mean if he's got the same attitude as him going forward you, you won't be too disappointed because he's as tough as teak that horse isn't he very tough and obviously his first run is he's, he's always run well fresh and the 1400 is his perfect trip uh, unfortunately there's not that many yeah. 1400 races for him but um i think the next one is in about a month's time but yeah no he's a very tough horse and I, like going into the race it was a very very competitive handicap and um but like I said, it's looking at it. It didn't look like it was going to be a lot of pace in the race, so I knew it was, all, it was always always going to be able to dictate. But um, you never know later on. Obviously, those those sort of horses sometimes can be a little bit vulnerable. But uh, he's tough. He dug deep, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a horse that uh, hopefully we can have a bit more fun this season. And there is Andrea. We move on, Paul, to our first replay. It is Flying Luck running fifth at the trials. He's had two here and fourth behind Jumbo Fortune in his first one, then fifth behind Lucky Eight. Had two starts last time in, finished about midfield in both of them, but did improve a length and a half between runs. Yeah, he did. And look, he was pushed out a little bit in this trial. Uh, you can see he just sort of held his ground in it. Uh, Hugh Bowman aboard, obviously the combination have really teamed up well with Casper Founds. Tongue tie on for the first time as well. Look, I was just happy to watch him uh, in this, so I didn't put him in there. No flying luck for Paul. First starter in the race. You've had one in, in the previous race in Gold Master. What about Mark Wynn? He's won his last two trials. Five in total, three of them this season. This is his most recent one uh, where he wins. Derek Long takes the ride. Yeah, I thought that he's trialled really well, this horse. Uh, Tongue Tai goes on for his uh, debut run here by I'm Invincible, as you say, Derek aboard, and I thought he won with a bit in hand here as well. So uh, a nice trial from this one. I'm going to include him in the numbers. I think there's definitely a level of ability there, and you can see him going really easy to the line, and those first two are quite well clear of everything else as well. So a nice trial. Yeah, another first start. You've got a couple of first starters today. Where does he sit in your top four? I'm going to put him in second, but I really like Solid Win. We just heard from Andrea there, and uh, this horse is lightly raced, and I think he's ready to win. So five to beat seven. I'll put Aero Invincible in. He does a lot of things wrong. This horse, he'll just need a bit of um, you know, sort of sort of racing manners. He has won over the course and distance in the past. Barrier two for him, and Golden Samurai, another one that caught the eye at the trials recently. It's one of 58, and he's down to a 55 rating. Five seven two four. Paul's got a win-win Quinella to. Uh finish first and second in race number six with solid win to beat Mark Wynn. <music> Class three, 1,000 metres with a trophy for race number seven. And interesting race this one. We've got, we are here up at the top of the book. This is his go. Loves course distance and class. Carroll Street has the shadow roll off and the blinkers going back on. Flying High is a five time course and distance winner. Pleasant Endeavour. He is also a four-time course and distance winner. Alpha One comes back in trip. Fast Network is unbeaten. First starters in Hong Kong, the 8, the 9 and the 10. Summit Cheers has blinkers on. Ka Ying Chi has a visor back on and a tongue tie for the first time. The speed easy here, Paul, from Cheval Valiant. Yeah, he, he's one of the quickest out of the gates. Cheval Valiant's got the claim as well, led all the way last start. Special Colours is drawn towards the outside fence. Alpha One's very speedy as well, but I think Cheval Valiant will be able to cross him. Uh, Kaying Chia coming down the straight thousand and uh, the unbeaten Fast Network. We'll just stay with Fast Network now. Here's Nick with his jockey, Zach Person. Zach, Fast Network uh, looks a, a plum ride for you uh, coming up this weekend. Of course, two from two in, in Class 4 and couldn't really have been more impressive last time. He's done a good job, um, you know, he sort of struggles a little bit sometimes to get his rhythm out of the gate early and he copped a little bit of a, a squeeze there uh, last time, but after he went a few strides he'd gathered himself, got balanced and from then on he travelled really nicely and 
it was just a matter of you know waiting for the right time to ask him for his effort and he's all, he's been a bit soft on the line in, in both his wins so hopefully uh, when the time comes and he's got to find a little bit more he's got it there I guess finding that a little bit more could be this time around. He's up into class three. I guess there is all that potential, isn't there, that he, he will take this step forward? Well, we hope so. Uh, he's unexposed. He's lightly raced. He's a big horse that you would like to think would derive benefit from um, an outing, and uh, he just continues to work well. So, yeah. Always nice to see the, the form take a bit of a boost. Obviously, Chevelle Valiant went and won next time, so on paper it certainly looks very strong. Well, he's a pretty good yardstick for the class 4,000 metre races, isn't he? He runs his honest race every time and if nothing's there to run him down, he gets his chance and if there's something there with a little bit of upside there, he quite often has to run second or third, but um, you know, he's, he's always good to have in the races because you know what you're going to get. Um, uh, just quickly, the combination, of course, with Dennis Yip, that's always been a, a fruitful one, a winner uh, at the meeting just gone. I must ask you, have you had a chance to sit on Massive Sovereign yet? Uh, I galloped him a few weeks back. Um, he's only early in his prep. Uh, he's going to trial, I think, at the Valley coming up. Um, and then I think he plans to run uh, early November in that Group 3 1800. Saturday morning at the Valley for Massive Sovereign. Also, Romantic Warrior makes an appearance there. We're going back to see an appearance, though, Paul, of Celestial Colours down the straight last time. Had raced over the short trip at Happy Valley, but not down the straight. And he handled it very well, running third in a trial well leading into the race. He had, and it's a strong form race too, because Magic Control's come out and run really well in the group race on the weekend. So look, I, I think he's definitely going to get his opportunity. Uh, finished off nicely. Look, we've seen him win at Happy Valley, but uh, this was his go down the straight thousand. And um, I thought it was a really good run from him. Didn't mind the run from flying high either along the inside rail there. He finishes off without too much room either. So good run from both those two horses. Flying high has placed a second up in the past too. So that's a breakdown of those two. We know what we'll get from this horse. And it worked last time. He got out, he led and was able to hang on Cheval Valley. He goes up in grey. He's placed a number of times from 10 starts. Four from 10 over the 1,000 in class three. How far will he be in front four in this? Yeah, well, I've got him and still got him in on a minor line because he's got the light weight. And uh, if there is trouble in behind him, he can scoot away. He's out of trouble. He's in front, out of trouble. So, look, um, look, I've got him on a minor line. I know he, the grade's probably a little bit of a worry for him, but he held on nice enough there. Yeah, will give you another good sight then, Cheval Valiant. And a trial now around Ka Ying Cheer, who comes to the straight 1000 for the first time. Back of this trial up at Chung Fa, he beats Voyage Bubble in this, so nothing wrong with the horse that he has beaten. He's uh, going to be ridden by Karis Teton from Barrier Number Twelve. Yeah, look, straight thousands is the concern. As better runs have been over Happy Valley, twelve hundred metres, so there is that uh, question mark there. There was nothing wrong with the trial, but he's found a nice race to, to come into, so I was happy to watch him on race day. We'll wait for Kay Ying Chia to go elsewhere. That is a look at some of the runners in race number seven. Good quality race over the thousand. Ken, fast network win again. Yeah, look, I think he can. Uh, he's uh, looked pretty progressive winning those two races. He won't be any sort of price, but he's on top. Celestial Colours, Cheval Valiant and Flying High in behind. Seven, four, thirteen and three. Lucky seven. Race seven, number seven for Paul for fast network to make it three for three. Race 8, we run 1,400 metres for this one and a run-run timing headlines the field, having placed two from three course and distance. Sugar Ball, an extra seven pounds for his last start win. Sky Trust has the blinkers off, wider draw for only you. We've got Super Ben and Sunday's Serenade, who have both been back to the trial since their last start. Miles away was scratched when he was due to resume. He's had one trial since. Cheek pieces go on both him and Triple Bliss, and also Lucky Fion. And the blinkers come off Lucky Fion, he'll have his first start for Ricky Yu. It is a winning turn with the 13 on it leading here, Paul. Omikasi has early pace also. Yeah, I think winning turn, I think he's loose with the uh, 10 pound claim on him. Uh, he's going to come in with a really light weight. Run run timing can go forward, Omikasi as well. Majestic colour, might just have to work from his wide draw. Miles away, he will be looking for cover there. Other horses will get their chance. Uh, should be a reasonably placed race with Super Ben drawing the widest. We'll have to go back. Sugar Ball was able to win last time and now he's down there on the inside turning for home. This was from Barrier 1. He draws two, so it's another good draw. He gets Zach Purton on board. He's looking to go an extra 200 metres. 
he won this race at 16 to 1. You have been cautious about them winning at double figures, making it two in a row in the past. He was a last run reminder though. Okay. So we, did, we didn't mind him uh, into this race because he had shown something in his race beforehand. And he did beat Storming Dragon and uh, Fun and Fun together along with Stella Swift there. So uh, I don't think it was a fluke. I, th I think he's a horse that's uh, coming up. Now he, he doesn't go on top with that seven pound increase, but... Uh, he goes in the numbers for sure. All right, genuine good win from Sugar Ball for Paul in the previous race. What about Sky Trust off a trial of Chung Far? He's had two, actually. He ran fifth in the first one behind Goko Win, and then this third behind La City. Blanche doesn't mind at all the 1,400 around Sha Ten. Yeah, I think he's the horse to beat, actually. He's been a very consistent horse. Looked good at the back end of last season. Blinkers off. Uh, he's still got that hood on. Hugh Bowman with uh, Casper Founds. Coming back to Sha Ten, I think, is the key. The trial here... It was pretty good, nice, easy trial from him. So, look, I, I definitely think he's um, he's the leading chance for me. Twelve times they've combined for six wins, Hugh and Casper. Yeah. So it's uh, a great record they have amassed in just a short term this time uh, in for, for racing in Hong Kong. Lucky Fion's now with Ricky Yu. He's made ground in both his trials, but he's been hard ridden from back in the field to do so. Yeah, so I'd like to see him uh, for the, with the new uh, stable, uh, this horse, but... Um, you can see him, he has been running on, so uh, it's just a matter of uh, how, he, how, how forward he is in this, uh, this race, but uh, I'm happy to watch him. No lucky fee on for Paul, but there is plenty of Sky Trust. Yeah, I think Sky Trust uh, can win nice quiet trial, and we saw that there, and he, he's uh, a consistent horse. Only you ran well at his last start, ran on really nicely for fourth behind uh, Team Happy, and is well rated now, uh, Only you. One off 57 and he's a 55 rated horse. Sugar ball, don't think it was a fluke. And we'll give Winning Turn a chance. He's going to be in front. And he's going to have no weight on his back either with Apprentice Claim. 5, 6, 2 and 13. That's the first leg of the late treble. Sky Trust on top. Yeah, a sneaky shout out in the first four for Winning Turn for Paul. Good race. Race number nine. This race is a class three. It's over the 1,200 metres. Mighty Stride returns. He's had a few uh, trips and turns along the way, but he's back with the cheek pieces on. Uh, Hong Kong Halls trial well. He's first up. Maniac has the visor off and the blinkers going back on. Ladies Choice, a two-time course and distance winner. King of Dubai makes his Hong Kong debut. Bit superstar, no blinkers, cheek pieces on and run, run, run. Is no cheek pieces. He's had one trial ahead of his first up appearance. Hong Kong Hall from the 12. Paul with no weight on his back. Should have to pace to get over. Yeah, I think uh, Brittany can get him across. He's led in his last four starts on the all weather, but also leads on the uh, this surface. Ladies' Choice led all the way in a recent trial. Young Superstar, his best run is when he's gone forward. Magniac likes to go forward as well. So should be a bit of pace in this race. Devano adds to this field. He's a very promising galloper. Nick with his jockey, Zach Person. Zach, race nine, Devano is your ride. First start for the new season. You've only had one sit on him on race conditions, and that was a winning one. Um, nice horse to get back on board. He is. There's a little bit more upside there with him. Um, he has been a little bit better in the barriers as well, standing better. He's, that was always his problem. He'd want to sit down and throw himself around, but he is standing a little bit better. Not beginning a lot better, but I think that'll come. He just seems to be handling things um, more comfortably this season. But, you know, it was nice to see him in his trials, being in behind a few horses and still find the line. Um, so he's not going to be a one-trick pony. And uh, last season he always felt like uh, he was nowhere near where the finished product. So hopefully um, he can just go on with it this year. I think well, in part you've sort of answered the next question for me, but just having a look at those trials, obviously yourself and Francis, perhaps by design, have been a bit more patient with him when he has one he's, he's made, or is that just a case of teaching him something? Well, when they slide out the gates, you probably don't have much of an option, right? You just get you get beat for speed. But uh, the trial, that's the beauty about the trials, is you, you don't have to be forced into riding them in any manner. You can just allow them to try and deal with different situations and... Uh, being in behind him, I think, is it's just part of his learning process. Yeah, indeed. Um, obviously, the time he ran last, you weren't on him. You had to ride the winner, of course, bottom up together. But uh, had a look back at the time that you did ride him, the second to the seventh, all one, even next time, or two starts after. So, rock solid form. Uh, it was good form at that time. There, were, it was, uh, it was a handy field, and he got away with that race with the trip sectionals he got in front and sort of pinched it. But um, yeah, you always like to see the form out of the races stack up. 
There is Zach on Devano. The big horse, Sir Paul at the top of the book. Mighty Stride is in our first replay. He runs a second uh, behind Last City Blanche in this trial. He did bleed after a trial back in January. That's one of the reasons he has been off the track for so long. Ability there, few issues along the way too. Does he figure enough, uh, done enough to figure in your selections? Yeah, he does. Look, I thought the handicappers were kind to him. They dropped him four points in the off-season. So, look, he's one off 73, and by that four-point drop, he's now to a 76 rating. So he's getting quite close. Cheap pieces on. The trial was pretty good. And he has one fresh up in the past. So, look, I, I think he's a, he's a chance. Look, he's not on top, but I, I'm going to put him in the numbers. He does go in, does mighty stride. Hong Kong Hall went like a rocket in this trial. Beat Adafil, who runs in the last race on the program. He ran fourth behind O-liner in the other trial. Against him, though, is a wide draw and a poor first up record. Did this trial get your attention enough, though? It, it did, but I, I didn't get him in in the, in the end because, again, those things you mentioned, the wide draw, he's going to have to get across and, and, and lead. There are other horses like Young Superstar that do like to go forward in the race. So uh, it was a good enough trial, but he has been racing on the all-weather recently. So coming back to the turf, I wonder if he'll have this one, then maybe we'll see him on the all-weather again. We'll keep an eye out, certainly, if he does switch surfaces. Ladies' Choice also off the all-weather is a trial winner. The horse that he beats winning goal. Gold has come out and won the last race on Tuesday. He looked to do it pretty easily, the, the front runner here, didn't he? Look, he's a victim of his own success. He's he's won off, his last win was off 53, and he's rated 66, and has actually run second off 67. The, the reason why he's so high in the ratings is he keeps running seconds and being bumped up in the ratings. But he showed he's more than capable. So fresh up, maybe this is the time to catch him. Is he going on top? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him on top to, to upset Devano. I think Devano might come up quite short in the race. There's six to beat five, mighty stride. Young superstar, I think they'll be more positive with him in this race. Six, five, one, three. Paul aiming for a win-win for Karis Teton and Michael Chang with Ladies' Choice in race number nine. We wrap up Sunday with race number 10 on the all-weather. It's a class two over the 1,650 metres. Moments in time, sword point come to the surface for the first time. All for St Paul's has the inform Matthew Poon. Telecom Fighters gets a £10 claim. Adafil's trial well. Chilchibi onto the surface for the first time. So too Kaying Generation. So too Red Hair King. It's not for Capital Delight, but it is his first time over the 1650. And Apache Pass has joined the stable of David Eustace. Who has the speed here, Paul, out of the three front runners? Look, it's, it's a, the other confiders is sort of one dimensional. He needs to lead and he needs to get across. So I think he, he, they'll just push the button with him. He's got the 10 pound claim as well and he'll just go on with it. As such, Orphus and Pauls is not the same horse unless he is leading and uh, he's, he might get crossed here. Moments in time can go forward. Kane Generation might have to sit a bit wider, but you can do that here on the surface. Red Hair King, Sword Point, you'll get perfect ones. Interview time. Nick with David Eustace, the new trainer of Apache Pass. David Eustace, a uh, good, decent start to the, uh, the training career. More on that in a moment. But you've got Apache Pass lining up in, in race 10. Um, fascinating old eight-year-old. I, I, I imagine you probably said to the Leo Racing Syndicate that you're going to have him ready early because you've given him three trials. Yeah, look, uh, this race was, you know, the obvious race for him. Um, he's right down the weights. Um, he likes the dirt. Um, he raced pretty consistently last year. Um, I thought he's... We've been unlucky not to get his head in front last couple of seasons, really. Um, he tries hard. Um, so hopefully I've you know, reinvigorated him to a, to a point. I hope the race would come up a, a little bit weaker than, than it has, but at least he has got dirt form. Uh, exactly that. I mean, what you've got in your favour is obviously a lot of those sort of decent types of horses that you mentioned. I mean, some of them have never even set foot on this surface, so a complete unknown for them. But, but your guy certainly handles it well. Yeah, that's right. Um, he's drawn a gate. Um, so it'll be you know, positive from, from there where he quite um, ends up. I'll, I'll leave that to Andrea, but hopefully he's in the first uh, you know, half dozen at least. And um, yeah, he's fit and forward and uh, ready to go. I guess now at the stage he's at, David, I mean, he's an eight-year-old. You've changed a few things around with him. The cheek pieces are going on. The tongue tie is going on. I guess you lose nothing for trying with a horse like him, do you? Yeah, that's right. He's actually, he has had cheek pieces on in the past. Um, I just thought he sometimes could just overdo it a touch. Um, yeah maybe sort of just mid-race uh, at times and, and the cheek pieces might be a little bit softer and he'll just travel nice um, without doing it. But as you say, he's, he's an older horse, going to change a little bit around, but not too much. He hasn't done a whole lot wrong. 
I know these older horses do need a lot to go right for them at this sort of stage, but I mean, he's only a couple of pounds higher than his last win. He's been placed off marks as high as 90, so there's certainly a bit going for him. Yeah, the, the other thing I'm you know, keen to do is get him back on the grass as well. He trolled nicely on the grass um, at Chung Fa. And um, I do think, you know, he, he enjoys uh, training on it anyway. So at some stage he'll, he'll have a spin on the grass too. That's Apache Pass, just going back a few days to, to Jumbo Fortune. Uh, there must have been a little bit of excitement in the camp when he loomed up, but he's gone close, but no cigar, but a very good run. Yeah, look, he, he ran great. Um, he probably, you know, went well enough to win, but didn't get, you know, quite enough luck. Um, albeit the winner was impressive and um, well on top of the line, but obviously very pleasing just to see him run well. Um, I thought he was, he was going very well going into it, so it gives you plenty of confidence that he ran through the line and, and with a bit of even luck at some stage, I'm, I'm sure he'll get his head in front. And that is David Eustace on Apache Pass. We're going to pick up the replay here, Paul, of Happy Valley last time. Red Hair King third. Moments in time and Chil Chibi, also newcomers to the all weather like Red Hair King. Telecom Fighters has placed on the surface. Uh, we're looking at the sectionals for Chil Chibi there, and Lyle Hewitson picks up the ride this week. Yeah, look, um, Chil Chibi got out of his ground. He did run on nicely, but he's been a little bit disappointing. Uh, Chil Chibi, look, Red Hair King's been so honest, and he fought on really strongly by So You Think. There's breeding there for the all weather, so he's the one that'll go in. Next up, it is a Capital Delight running a second on the all-weather. He did win on the surface over the 1,200 two runs ago, so nothing wrong with what's going to be underfoot in this race. It's just the unknown, the extra distance of 450 metres. Yeah, the first time over the ground worries me a little bit. Look, the way he finishes off his races, you think it'd be OK for him, but he's, fin he's found a really strong Class 2 field, so look, I, I was more than happy to watch him in this. No uh, capital delight for Paul, as we can see him there running a placing behind Super Win Dragon. Couple more to look at. Chiron Mascot, who's been trialling over shorter distances and hasn't been doing a bad job. He's had one go on the all weather for a placing and Kaying generation. Runner up in the Derby. He's had four trials to prepare for this. Yeah, so he, he's going to come in really fit into the race. He's uh, performing on, the, uh, on, a, on a synthetic surface overseas as well. So, look, I, I don't mind him in this. Uh, I've got him in on a minor line. Uh, Turin Warrior, I prefer over a lot longer though. I mean, his win was over 2,200 metres. There's that trial. There's one more to have a look at and we're going to look at it because this horse coming from the turf trial to the alternate surface on Sunday has really taken your interest. Well, he has. I've been sort of following this horse on his dirt trials, and he's won his last couple of dirt trials, uh, and all run really well on them. And he's really bred for it. He's by American Pharaoh out of a fast net rock mare. So, look, he, he's disappointing last season. There's no two ways about it. But coming onto the a different surface, uh, which he looks like he's, he's quite well bred for, just might be the turning point for this, this horse. So he's sort of one I've been waiting to get on to the all weather and uh, he should be a price on uh, Sunday. And Sunday is the day where he's on top of the selections. Yeah, going to put him on uh, top here uh, and hopefully he can do the job at a decent double figure price. Kane Generation, Adafil as another horse that we know does love the surface and then Red Hair King there on the minor line, two, nine, five and ten. And that is the preview for Sha Tin on Sunday. Ten races. We've got uh, A-course racing on the turf and two races on the all-weather. Post time for the opener is one o'clock.